And the lady yields back. For what purpose does Mr. Johnson of Louisiana seek recognition? Thank you. Move to strike the last word. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We've heard some really outrageous and even very revealing things today. Mr. Jones said several minutes ago that we Democrats are seeking to abolish the filibuster and expand and pack the Supreme Court. We'll do anything necessary, he said, and that's what we know this is about. On Monday, President Joe Biden looked into a camera and said that he wants to ban nine millimeter handguns. This is uh, one of the most widely purchased and used handguns by the citizens, law-abiding citizens of this country. In 2018, retired liberal Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens called for the repeal of the Second Amendment. And in recent days, liberals in Hollywood and even on Capitol Hill have started to echo that drumbeat once again. Our colleagues have made some outrageous claims here in, the, in, in this hearing today, been listening since it started. They claim, for example, that raising the purchasing age for semi-automatic rifles and shotguns to 21 will reduce school shooting. But as has been noted, this action has already been ruled unconstitutional by the liberal U.S. Uh, Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit, no less, when they struck down a California law imposing similar restrictions on gun purchasers or purchases for 18 to 20 year olds. Would the gentleman yield uh, today, for a moment? Our, our, I will not yield. Today, they've claimed that uh, Republicans don't care about gun violence. We've heard this breathlessly over and over and over, and that's just outrageous. House Republicans have worked tirelessly to combat gun violence and have enacted meaningful laws to put more resources into mental health, to provide training for guidance counselors, to fund grants for law enforcement while the other side was trying to defund it and provide money to harden schools. As has been noted today, President Biden apparently is not uh, in favor of that idea. And that just seems crazy to anyone who looks at it objectively. Today, our Democrats have claimed that gun-free school zones promote school safety, but arming teachers and school administrators would mean well-trained adults would be at the ready to protect themselves and the innocent children in their care. The depraved shooter in Buffalo a few weeks ago wrote in his manifesto, quote, areas where carrying a concealed weapon or outlawed or prohibited may be good areas of attack. Yeah, obviously. And of course, tragically, the elementary school in Uvalde banned people from carrying firearms. Yesterday, I interviewed for my podcast, Pastor YJ Jimenez, He's a, a pastor there on the ground who is ministering to the people of that West Texas community who have suffered uh, from such unspeakable loss. His calming presence and clear conviction in national interviews has captured the attention of millions of Americans because he has spoken to the root causes for all this modern violence and bloodshed. America has a heart problem, he said, and he's exactly right. As Mr. Buck noted a, a few moments ago, what we're seeing right now is the results of decades of decline with the secularization of American society, the open assault on religion and morality and absolutes, and the breakdown of law and order. We're seeing the results of all this on young people in critical settings, in the culture at large, and of course in our schools. And it's an inevitable result of decisions that we've made in this culture. Yesterday, a New York Times survey was published that found that 94% of school administrators today say that students are suffering from anxiety and depression, and 88% report that students are having trouble managing their emotions. You know, Thoreau said there are thousands hacking at the branches of evil, the one who's striking at the root. This hearing today was called for this hastily pulled together hodgepodge of Democrat bills that have been sitting on the shelf and will do nothing to solve the real problems at hand. This is hacking at branches for the simple purpose of making a show. While the root problems remain unaddressed, that's what we should be working on. That's what we intend to work on. That's what we will work on when the Republicans retake the majority. We'll address the root causes. I hope we can. God help us to do that. I'd, I'd like to yield my remaining time to Mr. Gomer if he uh, desires that, to address the false claim that was just made about him. Mr. Gobert, are you still with us? Yes, I am, and I appreciate my friend from Louisiana. Uh, I waited for hours at the DFW airport, um, but uh, there were problems with the flight. That's why I'm not in DC. But just like we've heard on so many other allegations, uh, they're without basis, without knowledge. But one thing we've learned uh, repeatedly, when Democrats accuse Republicans of things, whether it's colluding with Russia, uh, it's often gaslighting and, and tells us more about what's in the conscience of the accusers. 
And I would also remind my colleagues, I didn't know in 2016, but when the Democrats took the House floor, they obstructed an official session of Congress, which is a felony. And that's what most, uh, many of January 6ers were charged with. I yield back. Yield back. Thank you. Gentlemen, yields back for the purposes of gentlemen.